not only about today's topic, impact investing and what that means, where it's going and what is going to happen in the coming year, but it's October 1st. It is the sprint to the end of the year, more like any other. You have less than 90 days until the end of the year, 90 days or less to start fundraising, getting your product out to market and in the hands of customers. This is the time. If you haven't already been sprinting, guess what? Turn it on lightning mode because it is here. With that being said, we've got, again, an exciting topic to talk about around impact investing, what it means and what it means for you as both investors and entrepreneurs, not only as you're going out to fundraise and launch your products, but what it means for building and where to be placing your bets, what you need to know, what's happening around the world, and we're here to unpack that today. And a big thank you to you, our audience, for tuning in. If you like what you hear, click subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to be on a show like today, either talking about impact investing or a number of other topics, industries, and regions around the world, please reach out to myself and or the LA Token team, and we'll find the right opportunity for you. Entrepreneurs, I mentioned just moments ago, this is for you. Less than 90 days. You need that exposure. You need to be out there if you're not already. We have a virtual stage here at VCTV for you to get up on and pitch us as investors to get real-time feedback, start building relationships with us as potential investors in your company, and a chance to pitch our entire live audience. Think about the reach, the opportunity, and the exposure that you can get for you and yours. Do reach out to the LA Token team and or myself. And again, we'll find the right opportunity and set of investors for you. And a big thank you to Emmanuel and to the entire VC, excuse me, LA Token team for making VC TV possible every single day. With that, I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. Let's go ahead and dive in, introducing each and every one of our investors who have tuned in from around the world to share with us their thoughts and insights around impact investing and where innovation and technology is starting to make the intersection to fuel this industry. With that being said, Jose, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to see you. If you can, a short introduction and a little background on yourself for the audience. Thank you, Carl. Pleasure to see you too again. So, um... I'm Jose, uh, I'm always on two sides of the table. That means that on one side, I'm a serial entrepreneur and on the other side, I'm an investor. I've been doing this like for 30 years now, uh, being a business angel for 26 and a VC for more or less like three years. The areas that I like to invest in or like to be involved with typically are tech, especially in FinTech and everything which is related to um, brand building and SME market in general. Um, and thank you so much, Kyle, once again. Absolutely, and thank you as well, Jose. This is a pleasure, We're excited to have you back, along with Brett. I mean, all four of you, this is an exciting panel to have each and every one of you back on here. Brett, to you, in introduction, little background. Yeah, Brett Noyce, uh, founder and director of Unventures. Uh, we initially started out as a FinTech incubator. Um, focused on financial inclusion. And in like about the last year, we've, we've kind of moved over to just fully focused on uh, sourcing companies and helping the companies we work with find investment. So very early stage. And located in Denver, what else? What else am I missing, Kyle? I feel like you know more about me than I do at this point. I mean, it's probably true. But that being said, I mean, your world of focus around finance, financial inclusion, fintech, it's all the way down to through blockchain technology and all of the work that you're doing with so many entrepreneurs. I mean, if you guys are out there listening today, definitely reach out to Brett and team. They're doing some outstanding work. If you're in those industries, again, fintech globally, uh, blockchain and a few surrounding uh, areas and within the fringe, uh, do reach out. He and his team would be happy to talk to you. So shameless plug to you. And again, to Jose as well, he focuses in the same area. He sits on both sides. So whether you're looking for investment or just a good entrepreneur to talk to. I mean, the man himself, uh, both he and Brett could be great resources for you and your company. I'm shamelessly promoting guys. It's Thursday, having fun. Lewis, let's continue the fun uh, to you intro and background. And then Gary, we're coming around to you to close this out. Oh, I get to go before Gary. That's a good thing. You All do. right. Yeah. Because after him, then I, I can't shine. At least I could shine a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, I've been in, been involved in finance for over a quarter century. Uh, been involved in tech longer than that. 
uh, managing partner with FGA Partners. We are involved in artificial intelligence, uh, AR, VR, collaboration platforms, and I, I'm open to speaking to anyone. We may not do business, but I like to keep the lines of communication open because I may bring something to the table that'll help you to get where you want to go or for you to find the companies that you're looking to find. So I'm always willing to help. Now I give the ball to Gary. Before you do, I just want to comment on that. That's a, a very important thing. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, less than 90 days. This is something that's very important for entrepreneurs, is building those relationships, right? You never want to just reach out, ask and with an ask. Instead, reach out to start building a relationship, start getting to know the individual investor, make sure there is a bridge between what you're building and or, and or advice you're looking for and what they're able to provide as well. And a conversation can lead to so many different things. So don't take a conversation as no interest and just to move on, take a conversation as a relationship, something that's going to build over time and you never know where it's going to lead. All right, to you, Gary Fowler, the man of the hour, artificial intelligence master. There you go. That was a new one for you as well. Oh, it's amazing. It's and a new high note. At least a cat, the bag of tricks. It's unbelievable. Uh, anyhow, my name's Gary Fowler and so I'm a serial entrepreneur. I also started the uh, first accelerator in Russia. I lived in Russia almost 14 years uh, in Silicon Valley. And so I believe there's really, uh, you know, three levels of startups. There's an acceleration level. There's a regional domination level. But the thing that sometimes we forget about is how to go global. And going global is a lot about trust, especially with the digital transformation. It's a lot about success. So uh, I've done 15 companies. I've been involved in two unicorns. Uh, uh, I was on the original management team at Click Software. was sold for a little over $1.3 billion to Salesforce. So what we do is we really curate those companies using the contact and trust, which is critically important today. And as you said, Kyle, shows just like this are really important for the startups because it's difficult to get connected. If I'm in Mumbai, if I'm in uh, Abu Dhabi, wherever I am, Moscow, how in the world do I connect to those uh, VCs? We believe that Silicon Valley is a port to the rest of the world. Half the money in the world is still located there and a lot, most of it's on Sand Hill Road. So we're located in the Silicon Valley and our job is to help those companies curate them, sales, marketing, operations. Many times we'll take operational roles in the companies to help them grow. I'm into artificial intelligence. That's our area of focus. And of course, our AI is transportable across many different vertical markets. So that's really where we are. Absolutely. And just to touch on something, I mean, you mentioned, you know, going global, it's, it's a very difficult process. And on today's topic, we're going to be talking about impact investing. And one of the things around impact is it is such a big, big category and topic. Uh, not only is it a, you know difficult to go global, but once you do, it's also good to remind yourself and remember to act local, to be present locally as you do go globally, bringing your team, bringing your company, giving back to that local community, giving back to the local region that's helping to support you in your new efforts, but also act locally where you started, who helped you get started the community, those around you, et cetera. Continue to reinvest in those ecosystems, reinvest in those communities because the impact that you will have, not just on those other entrepreneurs, not just on those other businesses, but to the community as a whole, will forever change uh, you in ways you can't imagine very positively. So you something know, Kyle, to remember. Kyle, when we started the, the Accelerator in Russia, people said it couldn't be done. Here we are, a couple of Americans. We started the first Accelerator came over and they said, oh, we don't want to go to the Valley. It's not that interesting. We don't know Guy Kawasaki. We don't know Bob Durf and Steve Blank. I mean, it was unbelievable. And so the first one that we started in the first group that I took over to Silicon Valley for two weeks were absolutely mystified. Their entire beings changed by going over there. I introduced them to Jensen, the founder, a friend of mine who founded uh, NVIDIA. And I brought Bill Reichert in from Garage. So I, you know, and the other thing is you don't always have the right answers. It's not like the U.S. is better. It's, you know, what can we do together to make it better, right? It's not a, just about, you know, we're not always right. We're just searching for answers. Absolutely. And thank you, Lewis, as well. And so to each of you, I want to come to today's topic around impact, impact investing. What does it mean to you and what is the current state 
of impact. I mean, Brett, you focus a lot on financial inclusion, which fits into that as well. So I know each of you will have a different perspective, which is totally fine. So let's start with you, Jose. What is your view of impact investing and what is the current state from your perspective of it today as we round out the end of the year of 2020 and look to the year ahead? Well, uh, for, my, for me in particular, um, I've been investing and looking into a huge niche, okay, which I call business inclusion. And uh, everybody talks about financial inclusion, but in fact, uh, I think it's very underestimated what the capacity is and the opportunity is for every individual to just kick off a business and start getting that experience. And the numbers don't lie. If you look at the numbers, like 99% of those guys who kick off a business, they are not in innovation. They want just to kick off a small company, start learning. They don't have any experience at all in general, and they don't have the cash available to kick off that business. So at the end, the end result is really dramatic because like in almost every country, if it, if, even if it's in Russia or in the US, you know, or in, in Africa, doesn't matter. In general, 75% or more of these companies basically close down in the first year. And if you look at a five-year plan, you know, they like half a percent survives. They are not able to get to any kind of funding, most of them at any time. So this is the reality. Um, we have been planning this for quite some time. And we are going to um, put something on the market which will, ha will have a huge impact on life and on business building for everybody in the world. And that's, you know, uh, biz money. And um, at the same time, uh, while we are doing this uh, in biz money itself, we're also looking to integrate uh, with other solutions that we feel that is a chance and a change for people's life. And uh, that's the way I see it. But impact investment, it's much more than this alone. You know, you can have impact investment in so many areas. But definitely, this is the one that affects more or less 43 million people a year minimum. Now, and it's not a small number, and mm -hmm. I'm leaving it like this for now. Yeah, it's, it's a great way to leave it off. And as you said, it's not a small number and it's probably much greater than that in general with adding in other statistics that we see from other industries. This is a huge starting point. Brett, I see you shaking your head left and right. Again, I know you focus on financial inclusion and this is, <laughs> This is an area you and I have talked about, uh, not just here on VCTV, but also uh, off show as well. There's so much happening globally around financial inclusion more now than ever. We've talked about what's happening in Latin America, what's happening here in the US, what's happening in Africa. It's just a continuation of bringing very necessary tools and education to everybody on a, in an even playing field. But I don't wanna take words out of your mouth, so I apologize if I did, but what does impact investing mean to you and what is its current state from your standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I, I find that, well, for me to personally, the challenging question to answer. So I never set out to be in the impact space and never have ever thought of ourselves as being an impact I mean, we're not, we're not a fund, but when we went fundraising, we just kept getting put in. They're like, oh, you're an impact fund. And it's like, oh, you mean because we focus on companies that are doing good? And so we work with a lot of companies that are doing financial inclusion type products in the U.S. as well as, you know, Africa, different, you know, mostly Africa, uh, some other markets within uh, South America. So um, it's one of those things where I think if you, you're just doing something that's elevating the people around you, you get into the impact space and then people ulti ultimately kind of think uh, it's almost like a charity. And I think with the piece that people are really missing in the impact space, sorry, and I will answer your question, but is that they think that you can't do good and make money, right? We've always started with the focus that we're looking for companies that could scale. We think with blockchain technology and other technologies, digitization of all these things, that there's this great opportunity to just bring more people into the financial system and make a lot of money doing it. And that's how we think about what impact <laughs> investing should be or is to us. Um, I think it's something that's trendy, which, you know, if it trends in our favor, awesome. Um, I, I think there's, you know, what's the current state? It's something that people say they want to be part of. Getting the actual dollars out of people's pockets is another story, right? So I think words and actions don't always 
align is where I kind of think the current state of impact investing is. Well, and in some cases, it's very misunderstood as well, right? I mean, what is it? What is it not? You know, you've got funds uh, on the public side and the private side that are focused on it, but there's still a need for education as to understanding what it means in general. But uh, to the point, and the question is, it also means something different to everybody. And each of us can find our own ways of, of investing or looking or building at something that may have an impact uh, as well, whether that's on the ESG um, aside on the bigger uh, initiatives globally uh, that uh, people are focusing on along with governments in, in terms of investing, or it's something that's more specific to you. And Lewis, to you, uh, again, uh, what does the impact of investing mean to you and where do you see it from the current up? Uh, well, you, you, everyone, you, you hit the nail on the head. Impact investing means a lot of things. It all depends on how you're looking at it. You know, if you're talking about ESG and, and environmental, social, governance, you have more funds right now that are popping up that are getting more inflows today than traditional funds. So you have money that's going to work because people like, what do they feel? Guilt. They feel, they feel that there's something that needs to get done. So that's a positive thing. But you also, when you're, you're talking about impact, you know, I, if, if you're, if you're going and you're investing in a company, you're part of, you're building a company, you know, what is the impact going to be and you mentioned earlier about locally, what, what's your impact there? How's that going to, how's that going to go and and better that community? You have, you have, um, you have, you have uh, companies that build up in one area, you know, let's talk about Detroit. They build up there and then they head out and then they're not, they're not feeding back into the community to help it build. And I think all of this stuff needs to be addressed. But as I said, the ESG uh, area, you have tremendous inflows going there. And that's the big picture. That's the big picture. Okay. Environment, social, you know, change and so on and so forth and governance within companies and maybe within government. I don't know, you know, but I, I think that um, I think we're going to have a lot more of this on the minds of people. And, you know, Brett made a good point. You know, you, you can be socially conscious. You can, you can, you know, you know, invest or be part of ESG and, and look at, look at impact investing one way, but doesn't mean that you're not, you, you can't make money. Of course you can make money without the money. How does this work? This works because you have the money. So, you know, you, you, you can't look at it that you can't be a capitalist. You can be, but you can be a good capitalist. You know, I think uh, Gary Forbes, I mean, uh, Gary Fowler understands this. That was, that was a, that was a punt. Gary, to you, uh, as, as Lewis did such a good job punting yeah, it over yeah, to thanks, you. To, so, yeah, I don't even have to ask the question. You know what it is. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, impact investing, from my standpoint, you know, the KISS principle, the keep it simple, stupid, right? So just like we did in, um, you know, worked in Russia, the Ukraine, a uh, good part of Eastern Europe, uh, Japan. But, I mean, it's pretty simple. So let's say, for instance, we identify the top AI companies in the world right? They're ones that are in growth stage, which is we call Startup 3.0. I take those companies and put them in a place like Chicago. Or I put them in Atlanta, in the Black community. I bring in Black um, executives who have gone to uh, Georgia Tech, MIT initially, Princeton, Harvard, and say, listen, to give back to the community in a fellowship model to teach, right? Because there aren't enough Black executives. And I've been working on this for 12 years. My friend Medina who works for Tyler Perry, my partner, the uh, former mayor of Atlanta is supportive of us. And on my board is one of the members of the NAACP. And it's just like really simple, right? So if you put it in, you change, I asked, you know, why, why aren't there more black uh, executives, CEOs of companies? And my friend Medina said, it's because there aren't role models. So I told him, I said, listen, Medina, you're on the have and the have nots, you're, you're an actor. Why don't you take some courses at Stanford and Harvard? Why don't you and MIT, why don't you take those AI courses? We'll put you into one of the companies and let's test it. You know what I mean? As a guinea pig. And I said, you test it. I mean, I don't know what the answer is, but test it. You're smart. He went in, we put him for in a company for one year in a VP of business development role. He shined. Now he's running the program. So I think part of it is we've, you know, just do it. This is not that hard. Now, what do we need? If we take it to a place like Atlanta, or Chicago, we need support from the community. We need to make sure their funds are available that will be able to support those startups coming in and create a nurturing environment for them, right? 
where you're going to win. The same thing we did in Russia. Now it's an amazing ecosystem that's been created. And I'm not saying we're the ones that created it. We just put a little seed in the ground to help it grow. And I think those kind of simple things, the part problem, Kyle, is a lot of people talk about it, but they don't do anything about it. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not easy because you're going across multiple cultures. I mean, Medina and I have been working together since 2006, 2007. Right. I met him on a plane. He's a black rapper, an actor. But that's I mean, that's the way you do it. This is like really simple. Put it in. And guess what? Once you start to have a success with that growth stage AI company and people can see that it can do an IPO or do an M, there's M&A activity, they're going to invest in the next project. And now you've created a system. Right. So let's like you don't need to have government money and entitlement and all that. You just need support of people that want to make money because they're doing, you know, social justice at the same time. So it's a two pronged sword. One is you're, you have a great investment. The other thing is that you're making a dent in the universe. Absolutely. And, and I, I want to come to each of you on just a further and deeper dive on this. And Brett, I want to start with you. Financial inclusion. I mean, what are you starting to see happening or change in that space more broadly, um, or more specifically, pardon me, um, on a global scale. I mean, again, we've talked so much about this. Where are you seeing technology playing a role? Where do you see this really coming uh, up in, in an area that may not have otherwise been thought about or talked about? Well, I mean, I can always speak to kind of my narrow sliver of the world I see in the companies we work with. But I, I think we have three or four companies in our portfolio that are all US-based companies that are focused on solving problems in emerging markets. And, you know, like they don't necessarily have, they're not based, I mean, they, they end up finding and hiring people in those markets, but they're able to, to be a US-based company, raise capital in the US and solve a problem, like big problems in emerging markets. So that's kind of one of the trends that we see um, and how kind of technology, and I think there's, there's you know, there's an appetite you know, for the, the right investor, if they, they understand like the, you know, the risk that they're taking. Um, so I think that's something that we see emerging and a really good opportunity for everybody involved, we think. Mm -hmm. and, and Jose, to you, where are you seeing the areas of opportunity playing out uh, or, or opening up, I should say, in impact investing, whether that be on the financial inclusion side, that may be on sustainability, that may be on clean and environmental technology. There's, again, so much that's included in this, but where are you seeing the areas of opportunity starting to open up? Oh, well, I see a, a huge opportunity, uh, and it's uh, something for the masses, is that we have a real, real big problem global-wise. And there is no solution foreseen, at least for the next 10 years. And the issue is that we have more or less 430 million people permanently unemployed. And that number is not going down because you're going to get into robotization in the next few years. So a lot of these truck drivers, cab drivers, you know, are going to get unemployed, just, just as an example. And even in the financial sector, you know, a lot of things that machines can do much better. You don't need that much of employees anymore. So my question is, and that's what we have been working on, is that what are you going to do with all those souls? That's the issue. Are you going, going to give them a world income and then okay, they can go on a holiday every day? Or are you going to make them productive and you know, uh, reinvent them in some other areas? So the way we see it personally is that we see them that more or less, they could become uh, an impact of society itself by giving them an opportunity to just kick off a business. Because uh, if they would contribute and they would learn how to kick off a business, eventually they will come up with new ideas and get into innovation. Most of them, they are not from innovation or they're not creative enough, but there's a lot of stuff you can learn. And once you get connected to other uh, people, let's say more or less in the same area, and this can be local, you, know, you don't need to think all of this out like on a global scale, right? But eventually, you know, they, they have a huge impact. Now, this is something which touches every country. You know, there is no exception on this. And uh, the way we see it is that we see a huge opportunity in that area. Now, 430 million, okay, is not a small number. And I can tell you that the way things are going in the, five, in the next five or 10 years, we may even reach 1 billion of souls that basically need to 
you know, do something. And, and that's, that's the opportunity that we see, and that's the area in which we are working right now. Yeah, and I, I see everyone shaking their heads. So, Lewis, I'm going to come to you next. I mean, areas of opportunity, and not just furthering Jose's point, but also, I mean, you play the roles in AR, VR, entertainment, gaming, finance. Um, we've talked about data. How are you seeing not just the opportunities, but some of this technology maybe um, that has been underserved playing a bigger role in this? Yeah, well, I think I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think that the implementation of it is, is important. And tech, there are so many things that can happen, and there's so much you know financial impact that a company that's doing well can have on a community, on a society. I think we need to look at that stuff because you know it, it's in ESG. You have funds that are out there, and I mentioned they have a lot of inflows coming. They're investing in companies that are involved in that. The problem is there's no correlation between performance and what they're doing. They may be doing a good thing, but if you're not performing, if you're not generating the revenue, the income, how are you going to sustain it? It's going to be difficult. We're all not Matt Damon that we can go and have the water company and, and raise, uh, you know, and, and have a nonprofit and raise all this money and do that. You know, we, you know, if you have a company that's doing good and having that impact, you need sustainability. You need to be able to do that. And technology can do this. Areas of AI, AR, you know, especially in AR and VR, you have a lot of companies that are coming up that are that that need developers they need engineers they need all this stuff and they can go and they can and gary made made uh, mention of this to create programs that you're teaching these people go to the inner cities put together a program you know like to me growing up the boys and girls club was it because that saved me from a lot of things okay so if you go and you bring something to the table you will impact one person, a hundred people. That one person is connected to another ten people, hundred people during their lifetime. So you impact that one that one life. Jose called them souls. That one soul, you impact a lot of other things along the way. So you got to look at things a lot bigger. And again, in technology, this is the future. So if if tech companies, big and small, do more of this, we you know these these people that aren't employed, these you know Jose's you know, saying two fifty, maybe a billion over time. We you know then now you're giving them something. Okay, in manufacturing, if you have skilled labor and they know they learn they're learning technology and they're not just doing menial labor, they have something that they can go from GM to Ford to another company and apply that skill set and without breaking that back like you know our ancestors used to do. So th this is the, this is my input on it, and I think there's a lot more to do. It's not just about throwing money at a company and saying, I'm in the, yeah, I'm I'm involved in I want to have an impact in ESG to eat and do all that stuff. And meanwhile, you're not generating revenue. That doesn't help anyone. Generate revenue. We're a capitalist, you know, nation. We're a capitalist world. You know, everyone likes success. So we need to we need to um, implement that in the right way. And, and for me in technology and, and even in manufacturing, but in technology, that is the pathway to having a serious impact as as companies want to do mm -hmm. and gary to you i mean where are you seeing the areas of opportunity for impact investing and i know you have a fund focused on this as you mentioned and and brett i'll be coming to you next on this as well i know you have a fund gary uh focused on this you're doing a lot of work in artificial intelligence you've helped build communities but where are those areas of opportunity where should i be placing my bets as a as an investor and as an entrepreneur where should i be building yeah, so I mean, impact, right? Sustainability is impact. So think about all the areas, uh, you know, for sustainability. I mean, energy, I mean, literally across the board. So I particularly am interested in how to make a dent in the universe, make people's lives better. And so we're working with the urban black community. It's really interesting for us with friends of ours and the support of the black community. So that's, that's, uh, I think it's, it's untapped. I mean, we have, you know, it's just untapped. I mean, go out on the internet and look at how many black executives are in Silicon Valley and you weren't going to find a lot. And I think it's a, a two edged sword. It's not one is the right kind of role models, according to my friends um, at the NAACP. And the other thing is on the other side of the fence, uh, you know, they don't have the access to it. And it's just not, you know, it, it's something can be solved. It's not an unsolvable problem. Right. And so that's where I think there's a uh, untapped opportunity. And Lewis said the right thing. Once you get to a point, 
you know, we're into generating revenue. We're into creating companies that are going to be billion dollar companies. That's what we do. So there's no bullshit, no games. The thing is we come in, you want to work with a company, you know, you've gone to MIT or Princeton or Harvard, wherever, Yale, at least the first, top tier for the first, and then we move it down. Come into the company. Let's teach you the right stuff. Come in. Let's teach you so that you understand, learn by doing, so you understand. It's not easy being an entrepreneur. There's ups and downs and ins and outs, right? Good days, bad days, et cetera, but the trend goes up. Let's teach you about that, and let's move it forward, and let's you teach others. The same thing, like I said, I did in Russia. And we started it from scratch. You know, I remember the first time I did an entrepreneur's club, there were three people that came, right? And the last big event I had, I had over 2,300 people uh, come in to hear me speak on stage. Uh, And that's how big it got within uh, about two years. So let me tell you, there's an opportunity. And, you know, we need to work together. There needs to be multicultural diversity and mixed teams, it's proven make better decisions because you're looking at things differently. So that's, that's where I think there's an, uh, there are some opportunities. So sustainability and then uh, making a difference in the urban community. Absolutely. And, and Brett, before I ask you that question, I wanted to come to back to you around revenue. So Lewis mentioned, and, and so did Gary, uh, on the importance of revenue. So let's, let's start with that. Anything else to add on that? And then I'll come to you for the opportunities. Yeah, I just want to add on that. I mean, I, I think you had good points. Uh, I just know from my own personal experience of going, doing my grad school at a Catholic school of all places, that there was uh, something that I was on a board of for the entrepreneurship program there. And they always, one woman always brought this up from her upbringing. She said that a nun had told her this with no margin, no mission, right? So whether it be nonprofit or sustainability or you know, this space, it's really important to make sure that you have a business model that keep that sustains your mission, right? So, and, you know, if there's anything I learned in my six years of being in Silicon Valley is, you know, everyone there wants to save the world, uh, but they also want to be a billionaire, right? So, and if they have to choose, they're going to choose billionaire, right? So you got to kind of find that, that healthy balance, right? So I think the people that are coming out of the Silicon Valley mindset are always looking for big global opportunities, ways to make money. And they also really at the heart of it, they want to do good, but when they have to choose, they're always going to choose the, the capitalistic side. Has been my experience. Well, and 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 it's it's a it's a it's a very fine balance as well. To your point, you know, building a company and and looking towards how you define success, which is different for everybody, just as impact investing is is looked at very differently as well. And so, gentlemen, we are coming up to the top of the hour. I want to come to each of you for your closing thoughts um, that you may have to add in around the future of impact investing as we look towards 2021. And then, of course, where can everyone find you online to continue these conversations? Because there is so much great work that each of you are doing in various areas around this. So, Jose, let's start with you. Closing thoughts as you look towards 2021. Where are you seeing impact investing really having uh, huge growth and success and that you're going to be focusing and others should be as well? And then, of course, where can they find you online to continue the conversation? Oh, Jose, sorry, you're on mute. Uh, Very good points. I was muted. I'm so sorry. (laughs) No worries. Go ahead. So we had a conversation this week internally, and one of the things that came out was really, really interesting is that, you know, in every two people, one is a woman right? And my question is, how many, how many CEO women do you have in Silicon Valley? I have no idea, but I bet it should not be very much. So where we see that there is a huge change that could impact quite a lot the society, besides all, you know, all, all the other areas that, uh, you know, the, the inclusion of other cultures, you know, um, also, the, the issues that we have seen with um, the black community, which I, I see Gary has done a fantastic, fabulous job, as I can hear. I also look at it from a more practical side and say, okay, you know, every two, two people in the world, one is a woman, right? Why don't we have more women in the companies and in decision-making roles? So I would like uh, to see something in that area. I'm open to anything that, any ideas that people would say, you know what, this is for women and this is uh, where we would like uh, to do some impact. So I'm open. You can find me on LinkedIn. Okay. It's quite easy. Jose Graca uh, in English way. And uh, 
You can also uh, look up for Biz Money if you can't find it on my name. And um, I'm always open. I'm an open networker. So uh, pop in and shoot me a message and uh, we are in a conversation. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lewis, to you. Uh, again, quick closing thoughts. And then also where can everyone find you online to continue the conversation? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to repeat what everyone said. Uh, impact investing, if you're an entrepreneur, you're building a company, take that in, into consideration for later. You're not, you obviously can't do it from the beginning, but as you move forward, don't lose sight. Don't forget where you came from and, and figure out how you're going to have an impact on, on society in, 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 in a positive way. As far as women, you know, women in, in, in leadership roles is key. Okay, we have, and we're putting we're actually putting together a, a woman leadership uh, situation with within our firm because, to me, honestly, you put women in charge, they'll probably run things a lot better. Okay, because you know that's that's just my opinion. All right, uh, having diversity, diversity is important. Having all types of people, have a big melting pot of everything and you're going to get the best results because gary made this point you're going to see things from different angles things that you may not think about you know so look at that diversity when you're building a company and uh, just to make this short you know you can find me you can go to fj partners you can find out more go to mmegahood.com see what we're doing you can find me on linkedin again i'm open to speaking with anyone if you need help we may not do business but i'm a people person we invest in people, and I'm always open to speaking to uh, anyone, actually. Wonderful. Gary, to you. Oh, an answer to the question. So the Fortune 500, Jose, has 5% uh, of the uh, executives are female uh, uh, CEOs, the latest statistics, down from six. They said there are nine CEOs, female CEOs in Silicon Valley. So... I mean, it, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, you can reach me. And so, uh, you know, my, one of my classes at my accelerator in Russia, I actually paid for half the classes to have female entrepreneurs come in. I sub subsidized them. And let me tell you, some of those companies are incredible now. I mean, they're car sharing companies with, you know, three to 5,000 cars. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. So we can each, you know, Steve Jobs said, let's make a little dent in the universe. And, you know, we need to have a little uh, footprint before we depart this earth. Why don't we make the world a little bit better place and try to make some inclusion? That article, Kyle, that I wrote at the Democratization of Opportunity, Nikola Tesla's Dream Comes True, I published in Ford, I guess, Forbes about a week ago. I wholeheartedly believe it. And each one of us, what we're, we're doing is now we have that opportunity. You can reach me, Gary Fowler, at LinkedIn. I'd be happy to talk to you, or, or you can send me an email, Gary at GSDVS. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. That, Google my name. I'm happy to uh, connect with you. And uh, Kyle, you're doing a great job here, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Gary. And, and Brett, uh, close us out. Uh, last closing thoughts, and then where can everyone find you to continue the conversation? Yeah, kind of two, two quick thoughts. Um, from our standpoint, we'd love to see everyone in the world have equal access to basic financial services, right? So we'd love to see people that are making bank accounts available to everybody. I think that starts by giving like universal identity type products, um, the ability for people to build a credit score and just be able to enter the basic, you know, financial world like so many of us take you know, the, the advantage of, a, of, but not everyone has access to. So we'd love to see entrepreneurs working on that space. And we think that's a really big global opportunity. I think it's important also for everyone to think about how you're building your companies and your boards. So us personally, we partner with Beta Boom on the diversity side, uh, LGBT side, start out and female founded, uh, just to make sure that we're thinking in a kind of a 360 about everyone who should be included in these opportunities. Uh, you can find me at brnoise at unventures.co and LinkedIn, Brett Noyce. Wonderful. And thank you all again so much for your time today and sharing your thoughts and insights. Uh, to, your, to you, the audience, if you like what you heard today, click subscribe, give us a thumbs up and do reach out not only to all of our investors here on the panel today. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Gary. But also to all the investors we have here on BCTV, continuing to uh, echo what uh, Brett left us off with right there. There's so many great entrepreneurs and great investors out there that could be a fit for your company and or your board and definitely worth the conversation conversation. Remember, conversation first, build that relationship, work together, find out if there's a fit, and then uh, present the ask 
uh, collectively as well, because you never know where that conversation may lead. But if you like, again, what you heard today, click subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to be on a show like today, do reach out as either an investor or as an entrepreneur. And a big thank you to Emmanuel and to the entire LA Token team for making VCTV possible. With that, I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. You can find me everywhere online at Kyle Ellicott, along with each and every one of our investors today. We're all available 24-7, 365 online to continue the conversation. We'll be back here tomorrow with more VCTV. Everyone have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.